Good morning, friends. It is Wednesday, and it is good to be with you yet again for our devotions this morning. This is Wednesday, the 20... Let me think here, 24th? The 27th of May. So, um, in case you were all wondering um, what I would be doing if I wasn't with you now, um, well, or what would I be doing? It's probably a better question. What would I be doing had this coronavirus not come our way, I would be wrapping up my trip, Run for the Wall. I'm wearing that t-shirt today, Run for the Wall trip from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C., and then going wall to wall from the Vietnam War Memorial to the Middle East Conflicts Wall in Marcellus, Illinois, which we would have landed in Marcellus uh, yesterday uh, done our mission complete ceremony at the uh, Middle East Conflicts Wall. I would have gotten a hotel, stayed the night, and today I would have been uh, on the road, probably about now, heading home. About 350 miles away, thereabouts, I'd be heading home today had this pandemic not come our way. So um, that's what I would have been doing. Uh, also, this fur that you see on my face, um, that would have probably have been about the same because that's about when I started, stopped shaving, was when Run for the Wall started, and it um, doesn't mean it's coming off anytime soon, but um, it does mean that uh, it's gonna, it, it just is what it is. At any rate, it's a good day to be with you today, and um, I hope you all are doing well. Um, let us begin with our morning dialogue from Matins. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Well, our text for today that I selected uh, through some of my reading that I have been doing uh, has been, oh, let's see, Kat just said, celebrating two years of marriage today. Well, happy anniversary, Kai, uh, uh, Kat and Sam Gray, uh, Kat, Catherine Rokenbrot, uh, Kat for short, or Katie, well, whatever. But uh, second anniversary today, happy anniversary. And now you have a new little baby. I hope Solomon is doing well. Well, our text for today that I've selected is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, where the Lord speaking through St. Paul said, God has not destined us for wrath, but to, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Amen. There is a disease that is, seems to be running rampant in our society. I imagine uh, out of every person living on this planet, they uh, know someone who has or has had cancer. I think of many, many people come to mind. One in particular that's right at the, at the forefront of my mind is uh, uh, Holly Weiland, a member here of our congregation who has been battling cancer for some time. And uh, some people have done quite well with the disease other people haven't done so well with the disease. What's interesting as I talk with people who have had cancer, who have dealt with cancer, um, one of the things that I, a resounding theme, I suppose, that I hear from several is, several individuals, is they talk about odds, or at least the doctor has talked with them about odds. What are the odds of them beating this thing? What are their odds about of survival, that sort of thing. Um, but here's what I want us to, to think about, and that is our hope is not in the odds. Our hope is in God. 
you know, what our doctors, uh, you know, what we don't mean is that we have a hundred percent, we're a hundred percent certain that God will heal us. That's not what I'm saying. Um, and doctors would never, ever give those odds, but the rock upon which you and I stand, the rock who is Christ our Lord, he is much better than the odds. He is much better than healing, whether we're talking about cancer or whatever disease. Um, sure, we're going to do all the things for someone who has cancer. Most people are going to do everything that the doctor has told them to do, whether it's to begin chemotherapy treatments, begin radiation treatments, whatever the case might be. But here's the thing. The thing is this. As our future begins to shift, as we begin to rethink things in our life, God wants to bring to our, bring to our mind um, some things within Scripture. Now, as we think about this, what is it that God in particular wants us to come away with? What does he want us to walk away with? I mean, he does speak to us. Scripture is very clear. He does speak to us. He does tell us what he wants us to know. Um, and whether we're waiting in, a, an, uh, in, in the doctor's office for some news from a test, um, here's what God wants us to hear. That God does not intend this for the Christian. He does not intend it for wrath. Live or die... God will always be with us. I mean, that's my paraphrase to the Thessalonians text I just read. I mean, let me reread what, what it actually says. God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord, through Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we live or we die, excuse me, whether we are awake or asleep, we might live for him. Awake or sleep, that is biblical talk for life or death. I mean, I will certainly be alive with God. You and I will be alive with God. And how can this be? I mean, you and I are sinners. We have, we have never lived a day where we have not sinned. We have never lived a day where we have not fallen short of the glory of God or his glorious holy standards. So how can God say, you, Greg Stenzel, will be with me alive or dead? I mean, God didn't wait for that question before he answered, and it's because he didn't wait because of Jesus. Jesus alone, because of his death, there will be no wrath toward me, nor will there be any wrath toward anyone who believes. Not because I'm perfect. I mean, my sins, my guilt, my punishment fell on my Savior, Jesus Christ. He died for us. And that's what his word says. Therefore, I am free from guilt. I am free from punishment. I am secure in God's merciful favor. Live or die. God said, you will be with me. And that is very different from playing the odds, whether we're dealing with cancer or we're dealing with our current situation, the coronavirus, this COVID-19 pandemic. This is a firm rock under our feet. Jesus is our firm rock. It's not fragile. What's under our feet is not sand. I mean, I would, I would like it, and I would like it for, for, for this rock to be a rock under everyone's feet. And so that's why I'm taking the time to, to share this with you now. I mean, is the rock solid only in the hereafter? Well, the short answer is no, not at all. I mean, someone might say, well, religious people like you can can find hope in, in, in the hereafter, and you can find hope only there. I mean, here we slug it out. I mean, here we're in a battle and we're all alone. 
But if, if they are safe beyond the grave, um, then here's the question that I have. If we're safe beyond the grave, why do we fuss about today? But this is what God is saying to us. And this is what God started to say to us at the very time of creation, which makes a happily ever after ending for every situation you and I find ourselves in today. But what about this in-between time, this where we live right now, and this in-between time between, between uh, uh, birth and death and the hereafter? I mean, right now, during this coronavirus outbreak, what about, what about that? Well, we have to put a high value, at least I put a really high value on joy on the, in the presence of God. I mean, after death, uh, and, for, how, and for, for all of eternity, I am going to enjoy life in the presence of God. Every believer is going to enjoy life in the presence of God. And so we should all put a very, very high value on that. As opposed to, say, a, a, an eternity of endless suffering. I mean, that seems reasonable to me. But the rock under my feet and the one I want to share with you really is under my feet now. Now. Not, ju not just in the hereafter, not just in heaven. He is the rock under my feet and he is the rock under every believer's foot, feet right now. You see, right now, you and I live in the coronavirus, in the coronavirus pandemic. We all live there. And if it, but here's the thing. If it weren't the coronavirus, uh, now I can't even talk. If it wasn't COVID-19, it would be something else. It would be something else, like cancer, just waiting to occur. Or, or, or an unprovoked uh, pulmonary embolism that would occur. Just waiting to, to break off and go to my brain and turn, turn me into a, a mindless man, which some say that has already happened in my case. Or it could be a hundred other unforeseen calamities that would take me, that would take you, that would take us down at any moment in time. Right now, today, it just happens to be the coronavirus. Right now, that's all. But the rock I am talking about is under my feet now. And I could say that the rock is under my feet now just because hope beyond the grave is present hope. But the object of hope is future. The experience of hope is present. And that present experience, dear friends, in Christ is so very powerful. Hope is power. Present power. Hope keeps people from killing themselves now. It helps people get out of bed every morning and go to work now. It gives meaning to daily life, even when we're locked down, even when we're unsure about tomorrow, it gives us that, that hope now. It liberates you and me from selfishness. It liberates you and me from greed, from fear now. You see, what it does is it empowers love and it empowers risk-taking and sacrifice now. So I don't want us to think about uh, being a Christian is, is, is good now because we get to go to heaven. Being a Christian is good now because, yes, we get to go to heaven, but it affects us and it impacts us right now today. Here's one other point I want to make is that God is in the midst of this coronavirus. His fingers are there. His fingers are present. I mean, that's what I could say in defense of God's sweet word. Live or die, you will be with me. But such hope through the death and resurrection of Jesus 
makes me want to pour out my life for the good of others now, especially their eternal good. It makes me passionate about not wanting to waste my life. It takes away all the dithering. It, it fills me with zeal to make the greatness of Jesus Christ known. It makes me want to spend and be spent to bring as many people with me as I can into everlasting joy. But even though that's not what I could say when someone objects to, to Greg Stenzel's God, um, it's not the only thing that needs to be said. In fact, what I'm about to say will probably make someone object. They might want to say, that's just too much for me. That's just too much involvement for God in my life here and now. You've gone way too far. Um, and here's what I want to say, that God loves you. That God, no matter where you are in your life, that God is with you right now. He is that solid rock upon which I stand and the solid rock upon which I want you to stand. He is the rock of God's action in the world now and forever. And if the Lord wills, the Bible says, we will live. And that's about as involved now as you can get. I mean, not just whether you live or die, you will be with God, but also God will decide if you live or die now. And not just live or die. He's even more involved with the, than that. If the, Lord's li if the Lord lives, we will do this or do that. Nothing is excluded from this or that. He is totally involved. He is totally involved. This health that we have, or that sickness, this economic collapse or that recovery, this breath or not, God, nothing is excluded from God's view. Nothing is excluded from God's involvement, which means that while, while we wait for uh, a, a cure to come, a vaccine to come, which, well, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do, but... Um, uh, Nonetheless, while we wait for a break in this pandemic, God arrives, God shows up, and he says, fear not. He tells you and me, fear not. And why does he tell us not to be afraid? Because fear is the opposite of faith. Let me say that again. Fear is the opposite of faith. And I am so very, very concerned for folks, Christian folks, who are allowing this pandemic to control them. Fear over this pandemic is what's controlling them, not faith. And it should be the other way around. Faith should be controlling us. Faith upon the rock on which we stand that whether we live or die, that's God's call. That's not mine. That's, that's not the doctor's call. In the meantime, you and I live. We live, and we know that nothing will happen to us, nothing that God is not involved with. Whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. And until you dis And God says, until you die... At my decision, I will decide if you do this or do that. So what's the point of all this? We need to get to work. We have work to do. Because Jesus is my rock for today. He is my rock for tomorrow. He is my rock for eternity. And so I just am saying all this because this is our invitation to come to the rock who will never let us down. The scientists, the medical profession, they can just give us odds. They can give us charts and statistics 
and models that are always going to change. That is like being on the sand. Those things will always change. But Jesus, our rock, is forever. Amen. God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. And we thank you, dear Lord, for your mercies, which are new every morning. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would lead us and guide us and protect us. Help us, dear Lord, to cling to you as our rock, as our fortress, as in, in the, in the God in whom we trust. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So, dear friends, I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord. I want to remind you that uh, this coming Sunday, if you're here in Chippewa Falls, Christ Lutheran Church is resuming their wor our worship services. We are having two services. One service is at 8.30. Another, the second service is at 10.30. The reason why we're having two services is because we are going to be blocking off some pews, which means our seating will be reduced. So in order to accommodate, thinking, real, thinking positively, having a positive attitude, I suppose you could say, we need to have two services in order to accommodate everybody. Uh, but recognizing some will want to stay at home because they're vulnerable, they're feeling vulnerable, their health is compromised, and they should stay at home. Um, I do want to make a, a comment about masks. Uh, I will be wearing a mask when I am face-to-face -face with people. Um, but as the medical experts are still saying that uh, we should wear a mask if we cannot socially distance. If we cannot practice social distancing, we need to wear a mask. Let me say that one more time. If we are unable to practice social distancing, we need to wear a mask. So let me turn that around. If we are able to practice social distancing, then wearing a mask is up to you if you are able to do that. If you're able to keep a minimum of six feet space between you and someone else, uh, and the reason why I'm stressing this is I don't want to be dogmatic and saying everyone must wear a mask, but I do want to say if we are going to be on top of one another, we need to, we must in that case. Otherwise, we're free people. We're going to be spread out in the sanctuary. We're, uh, we're, we're going to, at the 830 service, we're encouraging people with compromised immune system who are, or those who are elderly to come to that first service. Um, and uh, we're going to spread out. We're going to have all the doors open, including the emergency exits that are up near the altar. We're going to be turning on fans, uh, the ceiling fans. We're going to be turning on the just the fan on the furnaces, so that will help pull air through. We're going to have the narthex doors open. We're going to have the outside inch. So we're going to have so many doors open that air is going to be blowing through to help move stuff around. So we don't, we should not have to worry. Um, as I said, I'll be wearing a mask when I'm face to face with folks. When we observe the Lord's Supper, which we will have the Lord's Supper at both services, we will not be kneeling around the altar, however, but we will practice social distancing during the Lord's Supper and we'll process down the center aisle. I'll be there at the, uh, at the foot of the, uh, of the chancel uh, to give people the, the body of Christ. With a ma I will be wearing a mask and an elder will be on my right and another one on my left, six feet away, will give you the blood of Christ wearing a mask. Also, I'll be wearing gloves. So I'm just saying that every precaution that we can think of uh, is being taken um, uh, in order for us to come back together. Jesus is the rock. Uh, he is our fortress. He is our refuge in whom we trust. And uh, we know that all of this is in God's hands because he is the rock upon whom we stand. And I pray that, that uh, this gives you a bit of encouragement and reassurance that uh, as we do open up, we are going to move slow, but as we open up, uh, we are going to observe every, every uh, 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 precaution that we've been advised to observe. So uh, I hope that gives you some comfort and that gives you some hope. Well, God be praised. I hope you have a blessed day. Uh, I hate to rush 
but uh, I have a busy day myself. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless you all and be with you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.